The Alien franchise, like most, has had its share of problems, but I firmly believe there's way more good than there is bad. Today I'm ranking them, starting from the bottom as always and working my way up. It's the best and worst of Alien on Movie Feud. I'm not gonna lie, I made it about 30 minutes into this piece of crap before I shut it off and smashed my controller to the floor, then beat my wife mercilessly. Kidding! I am kidding. I would never break a good controller like that. It's perfectly fine. The film looks like it had a budget of $25 and the acting was just terrible. The first movie was bad enough and I have Ernest Scared Stupid to watch, so my time is precious, obviously. <laughs> How in the hell do you take two hard R movies and pussify them so badly? What does that even look like? It looks like AVP. Studios have been doing a stellar job of turning successful franchises into more accessible pictures. Look what they did to Die Hard and Robocop. AVP has some cool fan service and some of the battles are okay, but there are far too many cutaway shots and the fear is nowhere to be found. It's just a mindless action fest with throwaway humans. The only returning character from past films is Lance Henriksen as Bishop, who plays second fiddle to the rest of the group. It has a script that rivals Weekend at Bernie's in terms of intelligence, but I could see how this is a guilty pleasure for some. Just make sure you know it's a guilty pleasure and not a good movie. Well, that was depressing, right? Jesus. This movie could have been a hell of a lot better, it should have been a hell of a lot better, and it could have gone so many different routes. I don't know what they were thinking here. The story is just bonkers. Ellen is the lone survivor after crash landing on some prison planet years after the events of 2. All the likable characters are dead, killed off screen. The exciting action from Aliens? Gone. The interesting heroes and villains? Gone. The film is a result of multiple rewrites, multiple directors, and one hell of a bad year for David Fincher. Everything I've read about the production on Alien 3 is a clusterfuck. It's just a nightmare for everyone involved, including the 28-year-old director who had everything to prove in the feature-length film department, coming off of music videos like Madonna. He was handed unfinished scripts that he had to constantly rewrite, which is not a good thing when you are a perfectionist like David Fincher, taking 20 takes per shot at times. And this movie ends on such a bitter, ugly, sad, dark note with Ripley once again having to do it all herself, sacrificing herself to get rid of this last xenomorph that's inside her body. This is some T2 shit. Except for with James Cameron's awesome movie, we knew that Arnold Schwarzenegger was just a badass doing it. You know, he's still a machine. Ripley's a human. A human that has been through more torture and pain than anybody should ever have to go through, only to wind up where she is, dead. Yet there is a part of me that can appreciate this flick, mainly because I can see the blood, sweat, and tears from everyone involved on the screen. It's muddy, it's dirty, it's grimy, and some of that looks kind of surreal and pretty. Some people call it a bad dream, and, and they stick by that. It, it, the movies are Alien 1 and 2, and that's all we have so far. I enjoy Prometheus the same way I enjoy a college chick on spring break. There's really not much under the hood, but what's presented in front of me, I can dig. I'm really into. It looks beautiful, especially in IMAX. Not, not the chick. The, well, There is some genuine tension throughout, with the highlight by far coming from the alien abortion sequence. And then there's the badass final review where our alien turns into that cute little teenage xenomorph, ready to take on the world and then kill it all. There is, however, a gigantic amount of plot holes and just beyond stupid character decisions. This, of course, comes at no surprise when you find out David Lindelof was involved in the writer's room. Thank you, David, for the biggest fuck you in TV history. More like alien perfection, right? No? no? Well, I enjoyed this movie. It's not like 3 gave us a lot of places we could go, and Fox, of course, couldn't leave the franchise dormant, right? Joss Whedon delivered a fun little script full of action, drama, and nostalgia. Some will argue that that's not the old Ripley on screen, and to an extent, that's true. But Sigourney Weaver doesn't miss a beat handling the complex emotions her clone is going through. Winona Ryder may have been a bit out of place, but Perlman seems right at home in this installment. Avoid the hate on this one. Don't go along with it. Alien Resurrection's a good movie, and it belongs in the Alien franchise. Game over, man. Game over. This is as good as it gets. James Cameron took the alien name and ran with it. Aliens is far more action heavy with space marines squaring off against xenomorphs left and right. 
There's a great cast of diverse characters outside Ripley like Hudson and Newt. It's a shame they only get a couple hours on screen before the next movie gives them a huge disservice. Where the first movie focuses on a single threat terrorizing a ship, this one goes all out with these assholes on a planet mouth-fucking everything that moves. We get our introduction of the alien queen here too. She'll go on to appear in a couple of the later installments, but this is the one where we get the most memorable moments. You would think after the events of this one, she wouldn't even bother with the cryogenic sleep. Every time she wakes up, another hellish nightmare unfolds. Just walk away from the cryo chamber. Just walk away. Impossible for me not to have this at the number one spot, although Aliens is just as good. Some of the effects have lost a bit of edge over the years, but the direction by Ridley Scott is handled so well, you don't really care. The cast is brilliant, the pacing's fantastic, and our leading lady could not have been picked better. It's an edge of your seat space horror done right. For me personally, it's just one of those rare groundbreaking experiences you just don't come across that often in cinema, so you gotta grab hold of it and really soak it in. As I stated at the beginning of this episode, the Alien franchise has certainly had its ups and downs with the AVP series being this terrible afterthought and Alien 3 being kind of a step backwards in the wrong direction, which would be which would be backwards in this case. Yet for all the missteps, I still find all of them very watchable, minus Requiem, and I have watched all of them multiple times. Rumors have been flying just left and right that a fifth movie's on its way, it's in production or something, I don't know. If that's the case, I'm there day one. I like this franchise a lot. I want to see it continue to grow. Give me your list below. I want to hear what you have to say. I, I'm sure it's going to be different. Mine is, mine is kind of unconventional, I would say, uh, out of the one other list I've seen on the internet. So take that for what you will. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. What should I do next? Best and Worst Superman, Indiana Jones, Back to the Future. I'm just going to do this now for the rest of the episode. Let me know. Tell me.